Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's on. Okay, good. I had to make sure that the blue light was on so that I knew I was talking to you and not to myself because you wouldn't hear me. <laughs> Anyways, hello. Welcome to Breakfast at Tiffany's. I'm your host, Tiffany. What better way to start the day than to sew? Yep, that's right. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> So we're going to see who is all here real quickly. Like we got Vicky, Constance, Pat, June, Teresa, Louise, uh, Terry, Marnie, D, Cheryl, Beverly, uh, Kay, Andrea, Tara, Polly, Judy, Karen, B, Danelle, Sheila, <clears throat> Where are we at? Zarina, Laura, Karen, and more. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So I am going to work on, what is it called again? Garden tiles, which you see hanging behind me, because that is where we ended two weeks ago on this is in this stage. So I said, oh, okay. So by the time next video airs, I'll at least have all the sashing pieces sewn together and all these together. But the whole thing itself is not sewn together. Now I did notice, and I want to say this because those of you that are doing this along with me or in the, watching the replay because you're following along as well, because obviously it's live right this very second. But if you're not watching it at 7 a.m., on a Thursday, then it's definitely not live anymore. <laughs> but I do have to say this. I uh, meticulously make sure, and you guys have seen this, that my quarter inch is the same. So that consistent quarter inch definitely helps with most quilts. But for this one, these little dashes on all of this did not land center. So when I sew these together, we're going to pin to make sure <laughs> I know, right? Tiffany pinning. <laughs> but we need to make sure that these stay in the center of the, the unit right here. Because just laying it here on the wall, they don't lay in the center. And my consistent, my specific quarter inch seam also has them sticking out on the end on some of them. Like the, the sashing strip was too long. So I don't know what's up with that and why it happened, but... Just watch it and don't freak out when you're sewing yours, your garden tiles. Don't freak out that it's sticking out more. What we'll do is we'll, we'll pin these so that they stay in the center. And then if there is any fullness between the two, we'll just take a bigger seam allowance on the dash part. That way they all line up. And then obviously if it's sticking out on the ends before we add our next border, we'll just trim those off. Because I'm pretty sure all of these, just by the look of it, are exactly the same size, the bigger unit. But the sashing is not. So just don't freak out if it's not the right size. So we're going to get started by grabbing the little tub of pins. And we're going to sew these things on here. We're going to sew sashing to the, the row. So I'm literally going to take the row off the wall. And I'm going to start with the bottom one. And I really don't need the computer at this very moment because I'm not cutting any more of that pattern at the moment. But I'm going to grab this way bottom one. And I really don't like to pin. And I probably could use clips too, but I don't want to dig those out because the pins were right here. And I'm literally going to place a pin centering these darn little things on here. <laughs> but I'm only putting a pin at the junctions where it should be center. Um, you got to go back and turn it on. Why it is it off? It was, and I did turn it on, oh. and it turned itself back off. But it didn't show that it's still on. And turn it off, then back on. I to tell you that. Oh, well, I don't know what's wrong uh, with this. Now. Okay. Do it more than See, so this one has a little bit of fullness right here, trying to line that one up in the center. See, I knew that there, there's always problems when sewing other people's patterns and not just it, making something up of my own. Is it over on the left? Will it be short on the right? Look at this. Look at this fullness right there. 
that's about an eighth of an inch in total. So I'm going to go ahead now, while this is getting pinned and hooked here, I'm actually going to just take this seam in just a tiny bit more, literally, right here. This is why I'm lining it up with pins, because we just want to stitch like a hair, an eighth of an inch over. It may seem a little bit skinnier, but it'll also help it line up to that center. If it's over on the left, will it be short? That's why I'm doing it this way, pinning it on. So whether it sticks out on the end or not, I'm just pinning it on here. And if it sticks, doesn't stick out, then I have to shift it. But I'm not going to shift it because I'm pinning these center. Okay, taking that one seam in. So far, help for this next one. I'm not a pinner, and pinning takes so long. <laughs> yeah, I don't pin usually, like ever, unless I absolutely have to. And this is one of those absolutely have to cases. Yeah, so this one's hanging over on that side is equal on the sashing part, but this side is hanging over by an eighth of an inch. All right. Now to sew, and to remember to remove my pins as I'm sewing. And we're also going to, one time real quick, because I was doing binding, I'm also going to make sure that my quarter inch seam is exactly a quarter inch. And it is, okay. It was literally off by like, you were so slightly. I don't think it matters on the sashing part as long as this part is sewn on. Oops, and I also have a binding stitch on there. So just pin it and line everything up. I hate that I have to re stop, remove pins. I'm so used to just like sewing and sewing continuously. That one's on there, and I'm going to flip it over and trim off that excess on this side. Why? Because it's longer than it needs to be. Right there. So look at that. An eighth of an inch. That's how much bigger it was on this one. And this is just the bottom section. All right. Can you turn the iron on so that things can get ironed also? You can iron. All you have to do is iron these back. Huh? Oh, I don't have it open. I have the pattern open. All right, so I'm just finger pressing this back and then I'm going to send it over to Scotty and we're going to start pinning on the next one. Oh, Susan, thank you very, very much. Very much appreciated. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, next one. Let's take it off. Lay it here. Pass that to Scotty. My shirt says, I drive bare or fast and barefoot. Fast and barefoot. That's what it says. All right, here we go. Let's put this in the center first. And I'm eyeballing the center, obviously, as best as I can. And this one's already sticking over a quarter of an inch on this side. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I finger pressed it that way. All right, that's center. 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 
Oh, and it's sticking over about a quarter inch on that other end. Look at that. So this one was quite a bit longer. And all my seams look exactly the same. So weird. All right, now to sew this one out. Can't believe I'm taking that extra time to pin things, guys. Oof. Something must be wrong with me. Okay, where you want to? Um, I'm gonna put it on the wall in a second. You want me to put it up there? Just lay it right there. This one back on the wall down here. And then this one is now sewn, but before we send it over to Scott to iron it, we're going to trim off these ends because, I mean, literally, that's a, like a quarter of an inch right there. I, I don't know what happened here. So. If you stay consistent and things like this still happen, it's not your fault. <laughs> it just happens. Just going to get them both off here. All right, just press it back, this one. All right, now to put this one on here. I know, I was hoping I'd make it quick, too, by... Uh, like literally just sewing them, you know, regularly, but that's not going to happen today. And I poked myself like five times along the way. I guess I can continuously sew with pins. I just got to pull the pins out, hold my finger there when I get close to it. Too. So I'm building from the bottom up, as you can tell. All right, let's trim these ends off. Oh, that one doesn't need to be trimmed, only this side. About an eighth of an inch off of that one. Okay, that one's ready. My Juki sounds softer because they got fresh oil this morning. All right, right sides together. Bring it over here. Toss some pins in the darn thing. So far, I haven't had to sew a seam. I say that now, though. <laughs> seam center, so that's good. Look at that. The pin just stuck in my thumb because it went in there upside down. 
Ay, ay, ay. Yep, not supposed to pin myself, only in the fabric. <laughs> wow, that one hangs over a lot. Okay, I gotta take this one in. See, I said that too soon, right? All right, we need to take just the hair off of this one. Come on. All right. How often do you oil the juki? I oil the juki probably once a week, but I sew a lot. Oh, yeah, much better. Yeah. Sometimes I oil more than once a week. It just depends on how much I'm sewing. This week I didn't really sew that much, so I didn't have to. I just um, I had to iron it, or iron it. I had to oil it, though, because I can tell when it needs to be oiled. I've been working with the Juki so long. It's like second nature how it's supposed to feel when sewing. Trim the other one. Obviously, they're not going to lay up here perfectly because I'm just trying to get it done. All right, let's trim this end off. Look at that one, a full quarter inch. Like, makes no sense to me. But that's why I'm warning you, making it so that you know how to make yours. <laughs> All right, next. Well, I have to stand for this. Ay, ay, ay. You want me to stand nope, I got it. Okay, here we go. Lay it flat, pin it on. I'm doing things all proper like. I don't know what's gotten into me this morning. <laughs> The cool police come visit me. <laughs> no, they didn't come visit me. Tell them what you did yesterday. What did I do? Oh, what did we do yesterday? Yesterday. You guys got to hear this. So there was the sound coming from our living room, and Scott thought, well, maybe it could be the fans or something. Something's outside or whatever. So we checked the fan. It's not the fan making this noise, and we're hunting things down in the house like, what the heck is this strange sound? It literally sounds like a squeaking fan. Like, you know, when the fan's on high and it goes, eh, 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 as it's spinning? <laughs> yeah. So we're hunting it down. Finally, we realize, okay, it's not the fan, but something bird-wise is in the attic. I'm not telling him I went outside and I saw that yeah. daddy quail running around. Well, he went outside first and he saw a, a quail running around our house, like pacing our house. So we figure it's birds. We have the pit at the front of our house. When you when you look at our house, there's a pillar, and then there's a, an arch type thing, and then there's a pillar. Well, at the top of this arch, there's one of those um, air vent things so that air can flow through. But mind you, our air vents that go into our attic have that fencing type. What is it? Netting type fencing stuff. Mesh, Mesh stuff. So we're like. Uh, how did they get in? None. There's no rips in any of the mesh. We're up on the roof. It's 94 degrees outside yesterday. Up on the roof, checking all these vents, checking in the, the awning around the whole entire house. How would birds get into the attic? <laughs> so we're like, well, the one day our garage door didn't close and, and we were just, you know, whatever. Maybe they got in that way. But then there's no way for them to get into the garage because the attic thing is in the garage. But we decided anyway, you never know how they got in to go up into the attic. So it's like 105 degrees up there. You can't even breathe in the attic, you know? So Scott's crawling around in there, 
Come to find out, the pitch at the front of the house, it's like a 12-foot section by like 8-foot section, isn't even connected to our attic. It's its own thing. Okay, go figure, right? So he's, he's up there. He comes down. He didn't see anything up there. And the sound, you can't hear it when you're up there. So, okay, what the heck's going on? So we're outside investigating. We literally almost ripped the stucco off of our house to get this vent thing off so that we can get into that pitch at the top of the house. We literally almost did. So we come down from the ladder and we're thinking, and I stopped for a second and I listened and I'm thinking, well, it sounds like it's on the patio. They got to be over the patio. So I'm like, well, maybe we should take the light off, you know, and maybe they got in through the light thing. I have no idea how it's, it's up there good. And then I stopped again at, we opened the front door and I went out the, we have a handicap ramp at the front door. So I went out the front door and I'm standing there listening and I'm listening and I put my head down. They're under the handicap ramp, the sound. So I was like, oh man, this thing is bolted to the cement on the ground. It's a good thing it's not very well bolted to the cement because the screws kind of were stripped in there. So they came out. We lift the thing up and a baby quail. I literally, that thing's not even an inch and a half big. It's literally like this big. This little baby quail comes right it out. Poof. So I chase him and I get him into my hand and I put him into a box. But we have to lift it up because there's still sound. So we lift it up. Two more baby quail come running out and we're trying to catch him. Scott can't pick these things. He thinks he's going to break it. So I'm catching the one ran into the garage and the other one's just running around the front. Yard. <laughs> so I caught the quail. So here I will show you guys the cutest little quails ever in the whole entire world. I'm going to hold a phone picture up to the phone. Oops, let's get it right there. Can you guys see that? The cute little baby quails. There's two of them. They barely even had feathers. They were brand new, like four days, if that. They were just getting their feathers. Aren't these things adorable? So we caught them. We have them in this box. But the daddy and the mama quail are stupid as stupid gets. <laughs> so the daddy's up on the roof, coming down, up and down, up and down. So we put them down at the bush by the neighbor's yard. The daddy and mama quail never came to it. So instead, the daddy quail gets stuck on the back patio of the neighbor's yard. So we take the box out to back to the back. And then the daddy quail still can't find the box. He's hearing the sounds, but he still can't find this box of his babies. He went back up on the roof. So he goes back up on the roof and mama quail comes out of a bush. She's freaking out. <laughs> So Scott tries, we take the box of the baby quails and put it over into the shade by a bush because the quails hang out in the bushes behind our houses. And so Scott takes the box over there and he tries to corral mama quail along the fence. So she's climbing across the fence, but there's a part on the fence that she can't get over. So she has to fly down. She flies down the opposite direction of the yard and then realizes she's in the wrong way and goes up to the roof. Seriously. <laughs> So she's up on the roof with the daddy quail. Finally, we take the box back out front and put it in this nice flowery bush. And the daddy quail finds the box. But instead of getting his flying into the box and getting his babies out of the box, he just spins, a, he's just going around it and around it, making quail sounds. Oh my goodness. So then we have to take the box and I go over there. Since I picked them up, they have my scent on them. We go over to the, uh, I go over to the box and release the little baby quails under the tree because daddy's now under this little, you know, bushy tree thing. And I release the little babies and they find their daddy and all ends well. <laughs> like, but mama stayed up on the roof, but daddy never quailed back and said, oh, found the babies. <laughs> mama, mama was up there going crazy. She for... was up there going crazy. Yep. It was funny, 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 but yep. Long story short, they found their family, and now the quail family is reunited. <laughs> they were the cutest things, though. Oh, my goodness, guys. I haven't held a, uh, any baby bird of any sort in, like, at least 15 years. So I thought it was super awesome to pick up the babies, you know.
because it's been a long time. Um, my son Cyrus, he was my, what is the word for it? Uh, he was my animal whisperer. Like any lizards, birds, anything that was broken wing or something, he would scoop it up and, Mom, can you fix this? You know, like that's the kind of kid he was. And it, it was like him talking to me, telling me, oh my goodness, Mom, you got to catch these little babies, you know? <laughs> I'm waiting for Scott to press that so I can put the top one on it. Yeah, I know. All right, so we're going to put the top one on. And remember that the red polka dot is the top corner. Obviously, it probably doesn't even matter. But but yeah, we, we saved the little quails. I can't, How they got under the, the wheelchair ramp at my front door, though, is beyond us. Because the opening, it's literally, how big is that? It's not even a half inch tall, a little slit. And then it kind of goes up. And then the opening at the end is probably, I don't even think it's three quarters of an inch. And these little guys were a, almost an inch and a half tall. So I don't know how they got under there. Like at all. <coughs> but it was an adorable little thing. And it made my day happier because I've been having leg troubles. So, oh, and long arm troubles, you know, because that. Hey, tell them about your long arm again. Yeah, that just. My, my long arm is being picky with client quilts. It's probably one of those things, the universe trying to tell me, Tiffany, you're working on too many long arm quilts for people <laughs> because my tension went crazy all over again. Don't know why, don't know how. But my machine does have billions, 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 like I said, billions of stitches on it. So, um, it, with a B, yeah, billions. It might be time for a new machine head, honestly. I don't know how long arms are supposed to last. It's been uh, fixed by the fixer people, but, you know, and it was good for the first couple months since, because we got it fixed in November right after um, Thanksgiving. But unfortunately, it's gone away again. But it's only doing it on client quilts, which is, I guess, the universe telling me. Tiffany, you're working too hard. So there's that. There's a lot, lot of things. My day was pretty bad yesterday. And the little baby birdies made it better. Yeah, I don't know how long long arms yeah, last. Oh, yeah. So like how long does long arms last? How long does long arms last? How long does long arms last? It, it's not a tongue twister for me. Wow, this one hangs over a bit. Come on, stay where you're supposed to stay. Thank you. Oh, well, you know, if I had thread in there. <sighs> okay, let's put some thread in there. Yeah, so I don't know what to do about my long arm. Kind of don't have the money to buy another one, but if I have to do payments again, we'll do payments. You know, just to get it done and over with. But I only need a machine head because I already have the frame and everything. But it's a thing to think about for our future if I'm going to keep working for other people. <laughs> wow, that's more than a quarter of an inch. How much is that? Uh, no, it's exactly a quarter inch. How long have you had your long arm? I have had it, I think, seven years. This will be the seventh year. Because I got it in the end of 2016. 2021, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, so this is the seventh year. Okay, that side's perfect. All right, here is that, and the red oh, goes yeah, in the top the corner. Yeah, I even bought a new bobbin case. And I got to tell you guys something, and I'm pretty sure it's the same for, uh, like, Jukies and stuff. The bobbin cases, when you buy them, don't come pre-tensioned. 
you have to do it yourself. So I had to do that one too. So I got both the bobbins, thinking both the bobbin cases had the correct tension coming out, but nope, not the one. I think I just dropped my original one maybe too many times or something. I don't know. But it, why would it do it on the second one? I got the tension correct. Everything was good. I did it on a little test piece, but as soon as it was on the client quilt, bam, it went crazy again. I think it's just the machine. It's randomly knocking itself out is what it's doing. I've rethreaded and, you know, all the things that you do with a long arm. But I guess all that to say that sometimes long arms can be picky. I even changed out spools of thread, you know, that kind of thing. I put two different thread colors on so that I can see the tension the whole entire time. And, yeah, it's, it's a little on the cruddy side. This is the top. So now we're going to put this one and this one together. So now to put the rows together. And again, I'm still going to pin by centering these on here. But this time it should line up because everything's cut to size. And it does so far at this end. I never pin. This is like somebody needs to give me an award, you know? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, yeah, that's perfectly center there. Perfectly center there. So it's just the sashing piece itself was off, you know? Center there. And center here. All right. Let's sew these two together, and then we're just going to keep adding them row by row, and then we'll cut some border fabrics. If I could adjust this, there we go. doesn't seem like a very big quilt. All, All long arms are industrial. It's an okay. industrial machine, yeah. Pretty much. But it's home use type. It's They do have uh, long arms that's like a big huge square thing that you load like the whole entire quilt stretched out on it and it's a big huge like square rectangly unit thing i actually thought about getting one of those for my garage but you can't free motion quilt on those those are computerized only so there goes that idea but they are actually cheaper than the actual long arms which i thought was you know kind of cool in the beginning all right now press this towards this again towards the sashing you know you we'll press it towards this, you know. You press it up this way? Yeah. I'm going to hook these okay, two together and then hook those onto it. I'm not going to pin this one. I have a feeling it's going to line right up. Let's see. I'll just sew it. We'll see. Well, it looks center to me on that first one already. That's the second one. Yep, that looks center. Living dangerously now. Back to my normal self. <laughs> Let's see, that one's center? Yep. I guess once they're all the same size, they'd be center. Don't know why I keep saying yep. <laughs> I know I'm so weird. It's morning time. That's that's the thing. It's morning, you know? And in the morning, I have my most energy. 
Come on. All right, this is going to be the same thing. Just press it like this, like heat up the seam, and then roll it back. Oh, never mind. I'll do it. It's uh, setting the seam. It's fine. I got it. I'm a quickie. We'll get it done. Come on. All right, so this one was that way, so it goes on this one this way. That lines up there, that lines up there. And then we'll add that bottom one after this. vibrate off of my juki. <laughs> Nothing's safe in the throat of the juki. top one is bigger because I put that on first so sticking out over the side can't adjust it properly and this is why we pin this back and then we'll add that last piece yeah my long arm has only been acting up with client quilts yeah it works for all mine the tension just so happens to be really nice on mine I thought it was like a batting thing at first so I put a different kind of batting I put a different kind of thread I put all the it's not it's just the client quilts I don't know what it is and the client quilts are nicely pieced too, the ones I've been getting. So I'm not 100% sure why it's doing what it's doing. All right, one more row to put on here and then we can cut out our border pieces. Okay, so this goes in there. Ooh. Seems to have shrunk by like 10 inches. Wow, it looks so big hanging there on the wall. still center so that's a good thing all those little dash marks I still don't get why it's called garden tiles because it doesn't really look like garden tiles to me looks more like a I don't know The little tiles I'd put around my garden don't look like this, but I don't have a garden. And if I did, it's not what I would use. All right, I'm going to press. 
press this real quick and then we can cut some border pieces. No, I don't think the starching thing is going to affect anything, honestly. I think what it is, is it's just a sign that I'm working too much. Because literally, guys, I bet that's why I haven't been filming actual video videos like I normally would throughout the month. It's because I got long arm jobs up the kazoo. And it's just me. And I'm not computerized. So they have to be on the frame a little bit longer than, you know, normal. Because I'm all free motion. So... Because I do everything free motion, it just takes longer. And, you know, I'm not, like, suffering from burnout or anything, but I am definitely feeling it, my body, you know, from all this long-arm quilting. <laughs> and I do take breaks. Sorry, I'm pressing the backside of the seams to make it lay flatter. Give me two seconds. All right. So this portion is together. I don't need to trim the ends because I've already trimmed them. I'm going to temporarily put it up here while I cut out some strips going to partially put it up there properly. The pattern says, is it falling? Oh, sorry. Okay. The pattern says to cut two inch strips. It's a free pattern, so I could say this out loud. It says to cut six two inch strips and sew them together, but um, I have a lot of fabric left. So if I needed six two-inch strips, maybe I can do, let's see how much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could do like three-inch strips. I want to make this bigger. I think I'm going to do three-inch strips all the way around with this one. And then... Because I like to change things up. I'm not a follower, you know, of patterns properly, as you know already. So I'm going to change mine up. But if you need to follow your directions because you only have so much fabric, then I say follow the directions. But I'm going to do some three-inch pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and cut um, seven three-inch pieces. It says six for if I was doing two. So I'm going to do seven of three. Two, three, got to count out loud or else I get off track, <gasps> four, five, Hold on, I'm going to count real quick. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, yeah. okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one more. Oh, I kind of went crooked there. Let's straighten that one back out. Sometimes it happens. You just end up getting wonky. And look, I still have a lot of fabric left. It's like seven and a half inches of that one. All right, so now I'm going to take all these, sew them end to end to end to end. And then I'm going to even go further off the pattern by taking this tone on tone and going around it again. And then I will put my yellow and white polka dot border. Why? Because I can. 
it's always better when the quilt is bigger. I mean, we got some tall people out there in this world, so you know, the, the quilt needs to be taller. <laughs> So it could cover their feet and their shoulders. Okay, I'm just stacking them all up because I'm going to do my borders the same as I always do borders. I take all the salvages off first. I stack them all up. Sew them all in one continuous piece. Line that up. Cut the salvages all off at the same exact time. Okay. Bottom piece out of the way. And then every two should be right sides together. Because that's so simple. What? My foot had decided to run away from me. I think this is a fun little pattern, though. It was a lot easier to follow than most. Pa it, I struggle with other people's patterns, and this was pretty easy to follow. So that's good. But some of us struggle with other people's stuff. All right, so I'm gonna snip these apart and we're gonna sew them on. I'm not even gonna bother pressing because there's no need at this point. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Come to mama. We're gonna do the sides, then the top and the bottom. Move that out of the way, because it's in my way. Take a drink of water and then start. I don't stretch, pull, or tug. I just line it up on here. You can measure your border, measure for your borders by measuring the two sides and the middle and taking the number that, a number that is closest to. So if one is 82 and a half and one is 82 and a quarter and the center is 82 and a half, do 82 and a half. You know what I mean? So. And then you would remeasure with the side borders. But I don't do that. And there is no police to come after me for doing the things I do the way I do it. <laughs> I just don't want to measure. I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> Same with the pinning. I really don't like to pin. <laughs> Scotty's singing. The quote police are going to come for me. The what? I was the bad boys theme. Yeah, the bad boys theme song, but the quote police instead. That's what he was singing. Bad quilter, bad quilter. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when the quilt police come for you? <laughs> uh. All right, I'm gonna go to the opposite side. I definitely like to not do what it says to do and do my own thing because now this quilt is going to be bigger.
honestly, you can do whatever you want. It's your quilt. As long as it stays together, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> scissors are going to fall off this table and stab me. Alright, put it on top of itself. Make the cut. Alright, turn it this way. Oh, yeah, I like it like that. That looks good with a three inch. All right, so I'm going to lay this on here and make sure that no seam lands at the end. I definitely do not like when the seams land next to an edge. I don't know why. It just drives me nuts. Okay, no seam landing at the end. I'm going to line it up. Finger press this border real quick. Fold it and trim it. Stay on. Oof. The fabric is going crazy on me. Just kidding. Hopefully I'm good enough entertainment for all of you this morning. All right, flipping it to the opposite side. Grab this and sew it on. If I was to get another long arm, I would get the same exact machine <laughs> and computerizes for the future. If if my work, here's the thing, computerized costs a lot of money. I don't got that kind of money. Obviously, we can do payment plans, blah, 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 blah. Problem being is I love to free motion quilt. So the only thing the computerized system would be for would be for Scott so that he can take the extra workload on days that I feel bad because let's just say. And plus it gives other options too. So like there are some clients that don't come to me. Like they, they hear about me. Oh, she's an amazing quilter. She does a great job. Then they finally get a hold of me, especially local people. And then they realize there's no design that they can choose from. They can give me a general direction, but I'm not a computer. So I can't quilt fairies all over a quilt. I, I don't know how to do that. And, um, I don't really follow pantographs either. I own like two and I don't even use them, you know, but I prefer to free motion quilt. So when they realize that they can't choose something, I lose business because of that. So that would be the only reason is for Scott to take up some of the workload and for me to keep more business is the only reason why I would do computerized, but I would still get the same exact machine. I have told you guys this before. Nothing against everybody else's machine. I don't mind them. I can still use them. As you saw when I was at Becca's house, I used her machine like crazy. They're just not my machine. 
something about mine, it moves smoothly, it has fast response You're time, and I'm so used to it. Yeah, for the last seven years, it's been what I've used. So when I use other machines, it's a little off to me. You know, when I mess with them, when I go to like QuiltCon or other quilt shows that have long arms there, they're different. Plus, they're like 10 times more expensive. My machine is not. If I bought a new head, it's like 4,500 bucks. That's it. I don't need the frame and all that, so I don't have to pay any more than that. You know what I mean? And if I want computerized, it's $9,999. You see the difference here? So I really don't want to get computerized just yet. But when my workload needs to be taken help with, I will eventually. <laughs> but right now, I really don't need it. It'd be nice, but I don't need it. Yeah, because if I used a computer, I, I think about it all the time. If I did use a computerized system, I'd get so used to that that I'd never want to free motion quilt again. And I don't want to lose my passion for free motion quilting. And I'm always learning new things. Trust me. I watch, <laughs> this is one of my secrets. I watch long arm videos of people that do the computerized quilting. And I watch it and watch it and watch it, that same video over and over and over and over again until it's embedded into my head. And then I go and quilt that same design on my own long arm. But free motion. So technically, I mean, I'm getting there when it comes to following computerized designs. There's some I cannot do, obviously. <laughs> but then there's a lot that I can. Huh? My, my machine is a King Quilter Elite. King Quilter 2 Elite. Oh, I only need six strips. Look at that. So I can cut some three inch squares off of that. All right, I'm going to press this and then we're going to cut the next border. Because technically this only gets two borders, but I'm putting on three. Because I can. I'm a border. I'm a border girl. I like borders on my quilts. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. It makes them bigger and it frames them. You know? This gives them that. Aha, look. It's beautiful. I'm really pressing sloppily, but as long as it gets done, H Handy Quilter Forte. Yes, I have played with the Handy Quilter Forte. It's a nice big machine, but it's not my machine. <laughs> That's actually the one that I wanted originally. Problem being with the bigger machines, the Forte, Forte is a 24 inch throat space. I am short. And if you've met me in person, a lot of you have you know that I'm shorter and my arm span isn't that long. So the longer length machines, especially like the, the gamels, like a 30 inch gamel, I can't use because I only can reach so far, you know? So it's kind of funny to watch me quilt on machines with bigger throat space because I can't reach it. And if I can't reach it, I can't see it. That also means sloppy quilting. So but yeah, I played with the Forte. That was the one I really, really, really wanted in the beginning. But Scott and I couldn't afford the price tag in the beginning. And I can't afford it now. So, all right. I'm not even going to bother hanging this back up. We're just going to lay it on my chair. And if I only needed six pieces, and I cut seven, if I only needed six, I'm going to cut six more. But of my white color. 
And again, I'm going to do three inches again of this white, which is my tone on tone. So we're going to do six three inch pieces of this one. So the second border, <clears throat> according to the pattern, the second border is actually a four and a half inch border, but, and that's all it uses. But again, still going array and doing my own thing. <clears throat> and one more. And look at that. This one, I have like, a quarter yard of. All right, I'm gonna stack these on top, cut the salvage off, blah, 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 you know the drill. Plus it helps me use up some of these fabrics because I wouldn't use them any other way, you know? What, hello, come. Separate, thank you. Right there. And one more. All right, cut all that off at the same exact time. This one has a really big selvage on it. That's like an inch right there. Stack them all up. Move this again, leaving it literally right there. <laughs> Put that on the bottom, and each one should be right sides together. I do free motion work. I do ruler work. It depends. Ruler work actually costs more because it takes a lot more time and energy. So um, most people don't get that kind of custom. Every quilt that comes from me is custom because I never quilt the same thing um, the same way. Like I could do the same design, but it's not exactly the same as if a, a computer did it, you know? So... Uh, everything is technically custom, <laughs> but ruler work takes a lot more um, time of me standing at the frame and energy and thinking and so on and so forth. So it costs just a little bit more for me to do, so most people don't get it. They just get the basic edge to edge, which is typical for anyone paying for long arm work. So, it's that way. All right, here we go. We're going to do the sides and then top and bottom again Put the whole thing on my lap and re-thread my needle thanks to rubbing the quilt against it <gasps> right, here we go let's make sure that this is right sides together And sew it down. There we go. But yeah, when it comes to long arming, I do a lot of stuff. I have a few people that only want me to show quilt, so I only show quilt for them. So it's rulers and free motion and everything all in one quilt. And they usually put my name on there. 
quilts when they enter them into their shows. Oh, yeah, no, that's tomorrow night. The 19th is tomorrow. Friday night at 8 p.m. on Becca's channel, we start the continuum so along. And then um, Saturday is the Zoom thing, but the sign up, it's already a full registration. And if anybody's out, then obviously she's got a list, a waiting list. But on, it shouldn't take that long to make this quilt, honestly. I mean, even for you guys, I know I'm quick with things. I'm going to draw it out. <laughs> so we do it Friday night on Becca's channel, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then on Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. Central time, which is like, wait, uh, one, I don't know. It's uh, 11 a.m. my time. Um, we st go on Ian's channel, Off Kilter Crafter Ian, and finish up. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And they're doing giveaways, so you got to come join that fun. And then obviously later in the day, I will be live on my channel on Sunday, <laughs> which I have no idea what I'm sewing then. Got to think of something, you know. All right, one side. Oh, don't fall. Stay with me. All right. Um, show quilts usually have really fancy quilting. The thing is, is any quilt can be a show quilt, no matter the quilting. It could be a computerized edge to edge and still be entered into a show. I think um, show quilting is when you're entering to show off the quilting and how talented you are or whatever. So that's what show quilting would be. Lots and lots of heavy quilting to accentuate every little element of the quilt. That's why I call it show quilting. It's the stuff that, you know, takes five to ten days on the long arm for me to complete. <laughs> Because I, you guys got to remember, I can only stand at my long arm for like an hour at a time. And lately, I not even that because I'm having leg issues. So, you know, <laughs> it takes a long time to get a quilt actually completed in my world. I take breaks and then come back to it all in the same day. Right now, I have a king size on the frame that I started yesterday. and. You know, I'll get to the rest of it later today. Come on, right there. Thank you. All right, I'm going to finger press back. Turn the whole thing and make sure no seam lands. Because I, I don't like it. I just don't like it. I'm going to put it right here. Adjust the whole thing. Oh, look at that. The seam lands at the end, <laughs> like literally at the edge. But it's going to be off by the quarter inch, so I might just have to pull the thing out, the seam out. Huh? Should I hang quilt tops or fold them to store? 
Well, I got to say with folding them, that's not a good idea. If you guys watch the bed turning video uh, from the last, one of the last quilt shows I went to, that tells you right there, you just need to lay them all out because the fabric wants to breathe. Lay them all out on a bed. Just stack them out. Quilt tops, I hang them. Quilts finished, they should be laid out. Don't, they shouldn't stay folded. And if you do fold them, take them out and unfold them every couple months and put them in a different position because the memory of the fabric. But no, regular um, quilt tops, I hang mine to store them. They're all hung in the closet. And I also, just to tell you guys this, I hang them inside out. So the quilts are inside out hanging in the closet. I know it's hard to see what they are, but I put a little tag on the tops of my hangers because again, that OCD problem of mine, they're tagged with the size and the name of the quilt. And they're inside out because where I live in Arizona is dusty. And it's dusty already in this room because we sew in these rooms. And um, I'd rather the inside of the quilt get all dusty than the outside of the quilt. Does that make any sense? <laughs> It's going to get washed away when the quilt gets washed, but I'd rather not go loaded on the long arm with a black fabric quilt and that outer side of the quilt be dusty. And then the dust beats up into my face as the machine, the needle punches the fabric, you know. All right, flip it over. Just going to make sure that this is long enough real quick because, you know, sometimes it's not. Just in case. Oh, yeah, it's plenty. Plenty. And then we have one more border to cut and put on. If I was following the pattern, this would be it, just two. But we're doing three. back wow three strips were like or six strips was like perfect for this literally had this much fabric left look at that i did really good on that one. all right i'm gonna press this back and then we'll uh put the last border Gonna be all bordered out. <laughs> all bordered out. What's your favorite part of quilting? My favorite part of quilting is everything. I like the whole entire process. I do have to say this, and and people have been asking over the years, what is my least favorite part of quilting? Let me come over here and tell you this in person. I finally came. It finally came to me. My least favorite thing in quilting is applique. I don't know what it is. Piecing the quilt part is super fun. But once you got to stitch down some applique pieces and sit at the machine, slowly waiting for it to do a zigzag or blanket stitch or any stitch you choose on your machine, those machines are slow. This is fast. Slow, that's why you don't that like slow it. sitting there, waiting for it to go stitch, 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 stitch back, stitch, 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 drives me nuts because that's what I did yesterday. And guess what? It drove me nuts. So that's my least favorite now. 
I finally come to the real realization that I have something I don't like. <laughs> you use a scant quarter inch? I don't use a scant quarter inch, no. I just use a regular quarter inch. Only if the pattern calls for a scant quarter inch, I'll use a scant quarter inch. Come on, stay where I put you, Quilt. Model Juki. My Juki is a TL2010Q. But I also have an HZLF600, and I also have a industrial that is a Juki DU1181N. All those numbers, right? Like, can't they just call it Juki Industrial? I mean, come on now. Just kidding. <laughs> I know you got to have a model number because that's how you find parts for certain machines, but some of them just are outrageous with their number and letter combos. Just call it the Juki number one, you know? <laughs> and the TL series, there's a bunch of them. There's a TL18, there's a TL15, these are T TL2010Q. I mean, come on now, guys. Just call it a 2010 or an 18, you know? Do you have any quotes as you go videos? I have like two quilt as you go videos. That's it. Little table runner, but not piecing a whole entire quilt top. I don't do quilt as you go quilt tops because I own a long arm. And I decided to own a long arm from the beginning of my quilting journey. So I don't really need to make quilt as you go. Plus, I don't find it very fun. I like to make the tops, quilt the tops type deal. Yes, I did. Okay, good. I use a regular quarter inch, the cut pieces don't fit. A regular quarter inch and the cut pieces don't fit? Well, maybe the quarter inch is off on your machine. You might want to measure your, take a ruler right here and measure the distance because some aren't off, aren't right. From the needle to my quarter inch mark on my machine itself, it's not a quarter inch. That's why I use the guide. All right, we're going to do something a little different here. I'm going to measure how big this is real quick, and we're going to go to the Robert Kaufman app and see what I can get from this one yard of fabric because I definitely want to use up the whole entire amount here. That's 61 by... Can you remember that, Scotty? see what this other number is. Uh, 72, 73, 74. 61 by 74. So let's see. We're going to go to the Robert Kaufman app on my phone. It's a good little app to get for this whole quilting thing. We're going to go to order yardage all right how wide was my quilt again 61 by 74 okay 61 74 i'm just going to put for one border because i only need one border left i want it to be let's say five inches let's calculate nope Let's go back and do 4.5. Calculate. It says I need one yard, five strips. That just, I only have one yard to work with here. Well, actually I have a little bit more than a yard. So technically I can do that last number of five inch strips. We're gonna do five inch strips. Let's try it one more time. We're gonna put that five number in here. One and one eighth of a yard. I definitely have one and one eighth here, right? One. Is that one eighth? How, many, how much is one eighth? Of a yard? Uh, 36 divided by eight would be a little over four. Oh, then I don't have that. 
seven strips. I need seven strips. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I, I, I can do seven strips from here. We're going to do it my way. It says I need one and one eighth. To, and I think that was my finished border size is why that I wanted it to finish at four, five inches. Oops, that was not supposed to happen. You can put cornerstones. I don't want cornerstones. I want to cut five inch strips. Okay, I need seven of them. One, <clears throat> two, three. Four, five, six, seven, leaving me with four and a quarter inches of fabric here. And if I have to do cornerstones, I will. But I don't think I will because it says I needed seven strips anyway. So, and that was for a bigger cut. All right. I'm going to cut these all exactly how I always do. Finally using up a lot of my fabric lately. <laughs> yeah, you have been using a lot lately. Yeah, I have been using a lot of scraps up off camera. I've been using a lot of stuff. On camera, I've been using a lot of stuff. I've actually been pulling fabrics like crazy. Because tomorrow I'm doing the continuum, and that is not the kit. I'm actually doing my own thing with it, because that's what I do. And I chose my fabrics, and everything's ready for that. So, you guys will be probably surprised to see what I'm working with though for that one <laughs> it's gonna be nice all right move the bottom one out of the way so each and every two strips together So when I do wider borders like this, I actually backstitch at the start and stop of each one. So that way the edge of the quilt, when I go to move it, lift it all the time and constantly show it off and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't knock any of my edge seams open on the border. Because I've had that, I get client quilts with that too and my own happen. Um, if, you, if I forget to backstitch or Sometimes they don't. Those or border seams will pop open. <gasps> it just happens from holding it up and stuff. They're very popular today. Scotty had to step away for a moment. His phone just keeps ringing today. The app is called the Robert Kaufman um, Quilters app. Let me open it on my screen so you can see what it looks like when it's open. It's the Robert 
focus. There it goes. It's focusing. It's the quilting calculator from Robert Kaufman Fabrics. If you just type in quilting calculator in the app store or Robert Kaufman app, it usually pops right up. And the icon looks like this. Let me see if I get that icon right there. Focus. Focus. Right there. That's what the icon looks like. It has an R and a K. Oh, that's magazine board that my fabric gets wrapped on. Magazine board. It's the eight and a half by um, 11 inch. So it's the size of a regular piece of paper. Pretty sure that's what it is. Yep, 11, eight and a half. Yep. And then I, get, I also use comic board card, but I prefer the magazine board because of the size of it. It looks better on the shelves. But if you have thinner shelves, then comic board cards would work for um, someone with skinnier shelves. But I have wider shelves, so. All right, I'm going to find the side first. Do the two sides and then the top and bottom. All right, here we go. Same thing that I do each time. Just going to sew it on. So this time I'm going to stop adjust so stop adjust so cuz this one's a little bit bigger to run through my fingers. I mean I can but I have to stop and adjust cuz it's a bigger border. And since I don't pin, I got to do it somewhat proper. I have now made this quilt quite a bit bigger than what it's supposed to be. Cut it. I'm going to do the other side. I have no idea. Length of fabric is what it probably means. I don't know all the um, short abbreviations for everything. I know what LOL means. <laughs> we all know what that means. Uh. LOL means life of love. Okay. <laughs> 
just kidding. Obviously. It's being silly. It took me a long time to learn what some of them were. I used to go to the kids. What does this mean? What does this stand for? Now I don't have no kids to tell me. And there's some that I still don't even know. And definitely don't know with quilting. All right, since these ones are a lot bigger of a border, as soon as this one's on here, I'm going to take this over to the iron and press these back first, then add the other ones because it's a little bit bigger of a border. I want to make sure that it's pressed nice and flat. So let me do that real quick and then we'll get the top and bottom added and this quilt top will be done. Good to go. Heck yeah. I'm on it. Come on. Huh? Nope, we have not just sold a quilt top. Nope. No, I like to finish the quilt tops. I've had emails a few times over over the years asking me if I'll sell the quilt top, but honestly, I don't know what to charge for just the top, so I'd rather just quilt it and say you can buy the whole quilt. <laughs> I do buy cute quilt tops on um, Etsy, though. <laughs> They're mainly for playing with things that I've never done before. So, like, I have never done a double wedding ring. Um, and I've never even quilted one for a client because nobody's ever brought me a double wedding ring. So, I bought a double wedding ring <laughs> of the Etsy so that I can quilt one. It's still hanging in the closet, though. I want to make one of my own. I just haven't done it yet. It technically was my original goal when my son Damon and his uh, beautiful bride Gabby got married. I did want to make them a double wedding ring, but I didn't have the time. I have the pattern and the templates. I just need to have the time because that's going to take quite a few videos to make that. So be one of those part one through part six kind of things. All right, let's add the top and bottom. And this wonderful, lovely, huge quilt now will be complete. Let's grab the end, make sure no seam lands. Stay. Here. Come on. No. All right. No seam lands on the edge. Oh, we have a visitor. Say hi to your audience, Thumper. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Meow. Meow. Yeah, he's jealous. He, he didn't get to play with us yesterday. The quail did. We got to hang out with the quail. He heard them by the door. He oh, probably yeah. was like, what the heck is that? There's something there. He sits by the doors anyway and looks out them. Because he's one of those cats. He doesn't want to be held and, and cuddle with anybody. He just wants to sit at doors and stare at the creatures outside. But he won't go outside because he's too scared to do that. Come on. 
this foot pedal, I swear. I'm not going to say it because I, I say it every video. <laughs> Do you know what size this will end up being? I have no idea. It was supposed to be a two inch border and then a four and a half inch border. I did three inch, three inch, five inch. So obviously minus those seam allowances and it's going to be like five inches bigger than the proposed size, which I closed my computer or else I'd be able to see the pattern. Oh, well, I'm ghost sewing. Put another bobbin in there. That's two bobbins. Just to assemble this quilt. Hey, get off of that. Go. Hey. He's on the client quilt. I have client quilts kind of just laying around in here because I, some people uh, pay me to bind their quilts too. So I have to do all sorts of extra work. Not saying it's a bad thing because binding doesn't bother me, but I just have it lying around in here. <laughs> I have so many things going on at once. I literally have just projects everywhere. And tomorrow night I'm starting another one. I mean, seriously? <laughs> I talked with a friend last night. I was talking with my friend last night and he's like, how many quilt tops do you actually make? And I was like, Honestly, I make one every two weeks lately because each part, each of these videos for even Breakfast at Tiffany's and So Sundays have been a part ones and a part twos. So almost every two weeks I make another quilt top because I've been drawing them out. But my side projects, I probably make one a week. Oh, okay. So that's including my side projects. So I make four quilts a month. Do I quilt four quilts a month? No. <laughs> I make them though. <laughs> right, a little bit more. Oh, come on. All right, this is looking like it's not enough, but we'll see what what's left here. If not, I can take my four and a half inch piece and s cut it at a uh, five inch segment <laughs> and make it work. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure this, let's see. We're gonna make sure that app does not have me wasting fabric here. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's plenty. It just doesn't look like it when it's thrown on the floor. You're like, hmm, I don't think that's enough. But truly, it is. Coming to the end, and then I'm going to press it, and then we'll hang it on the wall and do a rough estimate on size, and then I'll open the computer again and see how big it's supposed to be compared to how big I turned it into. Like I said, it's probably just like five inches in total extra. But look at that. Seven strips was enough. <laughs> Okay, I shall press this. The pattern should be right there on the screen. Jim says his daughter says you're a little weird. <laughs> I'm weird. Shoot, you guys are all weird watching me. <laughs> all right, let's 
press this beast. Well, it's definitely longer than 64 inches because it's uh, bigger than my ironing board. That's the width, actually. It is 69 inches wide so far. Once I press that other side, I'll measure the <laughs> length. <laughs> I didn't think I was considered therapy, but I guess, you know, this is therapy, so. Quilting is therapy itself, and you just add a little bit of a crazy Tiffany along with it, and bam, I guess you got yourself a free therapist. I mean, I do have some randy, randy, random crazy subjects I talk about here and there, you know? And randy. And randy, because, you know, every now and then you got to have a randy. Because <laughs> I can't talk. All right, let's get this length measured. What did you say it was? 69. All right, 69 by... Sixty-nine by 83. All right, I'm gonna hang it in two seconds. Let me write this down or I'm gonna forget. 69 by 83. There it was close. She said 71 by 84. All right. Scotty, we help me hang this up now because yep. it's a lot bigger than it's supposed to be. <laughs> it might not. How high are we going up? As high as I can reach, which is here. Okay. Well, I'm on my tiptoe too. Uh. <laughs> White girls don't jump. <laughs> Sorry. That stupid movie popped into my head trying to jump that high. Yeah. All right. There it is, guys. It fits the whole wall of my design wall. And now it's pushed on there as best as possible. Wow. I love it. I think it looks great. I think it looks great. I'm sorry, Thumpy. There we go. Look at that, guys. That's amazing. And, and it goes further down because it's the whole design wall from the top to the floor, as high as I can possibly reach. Oh, look at that. What a quilt. I definitely like my change with the bigger borders and the three borders instead of two. I definitely like that. So that's. Good. That's good. Good. And it's perfect size to literally lay on top of a twin size bed. All right, let's see how big this was supposed to be. It's supposed to be 61 by 73. So it's 69. So we added eight inches and one on the one way. And then it's 83 and that's 73. So Eight inches one way and ten the other. That part I don't get unless our measuring 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 is off, which it could very well be. So, either way, it's ten inches bigger than it's supposed to be, which is good. It is now people size, not kid size. <laughs> All right, look at that. We finished with fifteen minutes left of today. <laughs> Oh, it's called Garden Tiles. Um, yeah, I'll probably keep it called that. Honestly, I, I, I don't know. What would I name it? I, I wouldn't name it anything else. Honestly, it's, it kind of looks like blockheads, you know. That's 
True. Blockheads. <gasps> Something you would find on Minecraft. That garden tiles for Minecraft. This is what that would be. That's what a Minecraft garden tiles would look like. <laughs> ah, that's funny. But I made it bigger. Look better. It's a free pattern. Check the description below. You guys could make this if you want. I changed mine up with the three inch, three inch, and five inch uh, strips for the border. So that would be two and three quarters, two and three quarters, two and a half. No, oh, yeah. Hold on. They finish at two and a half. Yep. So two and a half, two and a half, and four and uh, three quarters because the other side didn't have a seam taken off of it. So. Look at that. Blah. I can't keep trying to pick that up. My fingernails and rulers just are not, you know, desk proper. And look, I even have fabric left right here, this little bits, that I can make something else. I literally had a bunch of 10 inch by 5 inch squares and some 1 and a half inch. So I can make a whole nother project with just my leftovers which I very well will do later, not today. And just in case you're curious, it was a Jolly Bar called Simply Delightful by Sherry and Chelsea. Designer stuff, you know. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Nothing? No? Okay, guys. Well, Scotty said he asked if you guys had questions. I'm going to go ahead and get off of here 10 minutes early. Look at that. I didn't have to use my whole two hours. I got it done. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video and having breakfast with me. And I hope you guys make it. And if you do, don't forget to post to the Facebook group. Um, I kind of scroll through and see pictures, but I haven't been very completely active in there as of the chatting part. But I do still see things. So you guys can share your pictures of your wonderful finished quilts and I shall see. So thank you for watching. Thanks for sewing along. And I will see you guys tomorrow night. For those of you, again, 8 p.m. on Sobecca's channel tomorrow, which is Friday the 19th. And then the 21st Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time, I will be on Off Kilter Crafter Ian's channel. And we will be sewing the continuum quilt for both of this. So don't forget that. And then Sunday after that, you'll see me again for Sew Sunday. So bye, everybody. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye now. See ya. Have a good day. I don't have any other, like, ending things.